Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hunt, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, uh, your host, the Hunter. Welcome back to the Baseball Hunt. Hope you like this video. Hit that subscribe button. We talk a lot about the Mets here. If you want to subscribe to this channel, if you're not on X, and if you're not on Facebook or any other platform, or even if you are, hit the subscribe button. This is the best Mets channel. I am going to have so many videos out for you over the next month, really probably beyond, because I, I'm seeing that people are really loving the videos. This is going to be the most active Mets YouTube channel you can find on this platform. There are other channels that, that have bigger subscriber counts, but this will be the most active. This is from Metsmerized Online, and I would mention the Mets have the draft next week. I will be covering the draft in a live stream. We'll do a live stream talking about the Major League Baseball draft, which will, be, which will begin on Sunday, uh, July 13th. I believe. 13th, yes. No, 14th. I'm all right. I'll get the date right. I've just been talking about it for like six months. Uh, but this is the strategy the Mets are going to have uh, going into this. This is just a summation from Mets Rise. This is sort of the rumors going around. Mets and Stearns, as David Stearns, like the shift draft philosophy for 2024. The 25th will be draft less than a week away. July 14th, the Mets appear to change their approach to drafting future talent. On days one and two of the draft, the team has the 19th pick, which was dropped 10 spots for exceeding its competitive balancing tax by more than $40 million. 46th pick, 82nd pick, 111th pick, and 144th pick, and then we'll have a pick in rounds 6 through 20. Many might wonder what new president of baseball operations David Stearns has in store for his first draft in Queens, particularly how he might approach it, because how you draft defines the type of team you want to build. Now, I would mention that I have a channel called The Prospect Hut. And I will show you, I will read, I will find all these players, uh, scanning reports, and I will discuss it there. And also discuss a little bit here, particularly things, who they drafted number one. According to a report from the Athletics Will Salmon, several industry members believe the Mets might shift their draft philosophy with Stearns and Vice President of Amateur Scouting, Chris Gross, the helm. In addition, the belief is the Mets might do a mixture of what the Brewers and Astros have done in the past and sign explosive athletes with big tools and pitchers with raw electric stuff. Stearns and Gross's draft success rate. It's no shock Stearns didn't have the best luck in the draft during his time in Milwaukee, but he has used this approach in signing players wherever he goes. Gross, meanwhile, oversaw the five drafts during his time in Houston having success in both the early and late rounds with players cracking the big club roster. He was responsible for the signs of shortstop Jeremy Pena in the third round, Corey Lee in the first round, right-handed pitcher Hunter Brown, fifth round, catcher Garrett Stubbs in the eighth round, left-handed pitcher Patrick Sandoval in the eleventh round, and outfielder Jake Myers in the thirteenth round. Since 2012, when Gross joined the Astros organization, club has a league-high 64 players they drafted and signed to either appear in the majors with the team or another MLB team. In recent years, the Mets have drafted the likes of shortstop Cowan Houck, catcher Kevin Parada, and fielder Jeff Williams, pitcher Kuma Rocker, outfielder Pete Crow Armstrong, third baseman Brett Beatty, and outfielder Jared Kalani. I would also mention Matt Allen in the first round alone. The results are a mixed bag at best. Looking at these players, Beatty has struggled during his MLB time, but continues to mash in Syracuse. Williams ha looks prized to be one of the best grabs in quite some time and might debut in Queens as soon as 25, with Hack looking like he can shape into a solid everyday player. Brown has struggled mightily at times, but has also shown strides of promise. Armstrong and Kalelnik are no longer with the club. And Rocker never even signed the contract. Let me go back a little bit. Uh, P. Crow Armstrong got traded in the Javi Baez deal. He's played great defense for the Cubs, but he has not shown to have the wherewithal to be a bat. And when the Mets drafted him in 2020, that's what his reputation was as a high school player, was that he couldn't hit. And that has shown to be in the majors, to a certain degree. Kuma Rocker. The Mets drafted him, and they, they predicated... All their slot money having wanted to sign him, and they spent less money later on in the draft. They took a, a look at his x rays on his elbow, and they found out that this was a guy that didn't even want to make an offer for. And they let him become a free agent 
but then become a, a re-entry into the draft the following year for 2022. And uh, the Mets didn't, and everybody was excited when the Mets drafted him because he was so big when he pitched in college. But he has been a bust. And then he went to Texas last year at a very high draft pick. And then he hurt his arm and he had to get Tommy John surgery. So that was that Mets got lucky with that, but they lost the draft pick. Kevin Parada came in with a big reputation as a catcher from Georgia, Georgia Tech. And he has done very little uh, to show that he can hit at the level that he did in college. And his defense has been very not so great in, in the minor leagues. Jet Williams has been hurt all season long. Colin Houck has struggled a little bit in his first year in, in uh, St. Lu Fort St. Lucie. Uh, I would expect that he'll pick it up probably next year. And Jared Colon, they obviously went in the Edwin Diaz deal. Uh, people were, were spastic about it. Mets were very quick to move him. They drafted him in 2018, then they moved him that offseason. And, of course, Brett Beatty, they drafted him in 2019, and he is not – he's in the minors. So – Really, a mix. Really, very much a mixed bag to the point where it's nothing even something to even to, to discuss. While draft standouts like Travis Bazana and Jack Caglione won't see the light of day after the fifth pick, the Mets still have plenty of options for their first pick at number nineteen. ESPN's Kylie McDaniel who also reports that the Mets are looking to target big tools and outstanding athletic types, as the Mets drafted right-handed pitcher Brody Breck from the University of Iowa. Brecht is MLB's number 21st ranked prospect in the draft. This fastball and slider comparable to Pirates ace Paul Skeens when Brecht is dialed up, as was not, as it dialed in. McDaniel also notes the Mets could take right handed pitcher William Schmidt, left handed pitcher Cash Mayfield, or right handed pitcher Dax Whitney on the pitching side. And outfield advance Honeycutt, who's the name I've heard the most, uh, at number 22. Shortstop Griff O'Farrell, number 38, is a new name. Outfield Dakota Jordan at number 34. Or shortstop Tyson Lewis, number 39, on the position player side. Lewis and Whitney might even spill over to the second round. In Baseball America's latest mock draft, the Mets select Seaver King, an outfielder shortstop out of Wake Forest. With a name like Seaver, it must be fate, right? Carlos Colazzo. Doesn't believe King will make it this far, but has heard the Mets connected to outfielder Carson Bench. And Carson Bench is from Oklahoma State. And I hope they get him. That's the guy I want. Just so I can say Oklahoma. He's number 18th best prospect in the draft. And power bats like third baseman Tommy White, number 20. Third baseman Billy Amick, number 32. And the previously mentioned Jordan and Honeycutt. However, King is another name that fits right into Stearns' plan. He's a versatile player with huge upside, with high upside. Now, I would mention about Seaver King. I've heard him going as high as number eight. So I don't know if that's going to get him. But I want Carson Bench just due to the fact that I can say Oklahoma the way I say it. So I'm all excited about Nolan McClain because he went to Oklahoma State. <laughs> or just Oklahoma, whatever. They went to school in Oklahoma. That's the most important thing. When the Mets brought in David Stern to sign a new Dorn and Flushing for the ball club, we got to see him take an immediate impact in the offseason and see how it played out almost halfway into the season. Now it's time to see him put his mark on the farm system, an aspect of the Mets that has continued to trend in the right direction over the past couple of years. Now this is the thing. Uh, people online are constantly complaining about the Mets not drafting the players uh, and making them get to the major leagues and having them be successful. The grifter known as Frank Fleming was screaming about the Mets farm system today. When you are constantly calling for people to be fired and you're constantly calling for people to be thrown out of here, you're never going to be able to develop any kind of any kind of uh, farm system where you have like a philosophy of what you're going to have. And that's why you get this mangled uh, nonsense with the Mets farm system. I'll go through the do these names again just to give you an idea of who drafted who and when. Jared Kalanick and Brett Beatty and Pete Crow Armstrong were, were drafted by... Brody Van Wagen, along with Matt Allen. Kuma Rocker was drafted by uh, Zach Scott. Colin Howe, Kevin Pratt, and Jeff Williams were drafted by Billy Eckler. Those are three GMs over the course of six seasons. How do you suppose that you can build a farm system when you have three or four people running your farm system over the course of three seasons or four seasons? It's impossible to do it. 
Uh, you need stability. You need continuity. If you have people that know what they're doing, you're going to be successful. This goes for any kind of business. But if you're doing the same stuff over and over and over again, constant turnover, constant uh, you know, nonsense going on, you're never going to have any kind of consistency. You're never going to have any kind of success. And that's just in any form of business, really. And grifters like uh, Frank Fleming know that, but he wants to get everybody upset when he says the Mets never develop anybody good. Well, the guy that was selected in the All-Star game, Pete Alonso, was drafted by the Mets. Former batting title champion, Jeff McNeil, drafted by the Mets. You get to the majors, that's a big deal. But then they complain you have a bad start here and there. And then he mocks Eric Gorsey, uh and makes fun of his name. What a slime ball. The guy is a two-time survivor of cancer. And he's making fun of that guy. Making fun of that kid. Disgrace. That guy is a disgrace. You only don't rant about something's information about this about something particular like this, but it really irritated me on, on Monday when I saw this. But anyway, if you're not on X and if you're not on Facebook, again, like I said, hit the subscribe button so you know what's going on with the Mets. I am the most active channel on YouTube. We're going to have plenty of videos, at least three videos a day, shorts, live streams, everything you want here. This is the channel you want. This is all Mets all day long. And I'm going to be the one channel that does it all. And thank you for watching. Hopefully you like this video. Hit the subscribe button. I'll see you later.